participants through mobile robots in manufacturing environments. This paper has been co-authored by Dr. Stephen Canfield and Tristan Hill. So these are similar to the images you saw before. So real quickly, on the left here we see a ship welding cast where the robot is conducting a mechanized weld. In the middle we have an inspection or, self, or a surface cleaning task actually, uh, where the robot will be traveling around this duct, uh, even into an inverted position. And then on the right we have a large surge tank that you would see in a hydroelectric facility and it is also conducting an inspection task. So one or a few common features we see between all these tasks is that they all would require the robot to operate for an extended amount of time. They all require high mobility and a high resolution of motion. They all require the robot to have strong adherence forces, in our case magnetic tracks. And then all the surfaces are uniform. They're all fair surfaces and they're all fairly clean. And then lastly, all these robots have the potential to carry large payloads, such as the equipment that's uh, used for welding or some of the inspection tasks. So in this paper, we're going to consider the power consumption as a design constraint. Uh, and so we could potentially reduce the size and mass of the motors and other drive components if we could reduce the power consumption. And we can also reduce the overall energy required to conduct a certain task. So the approach we're going to take to do this we're going to calculate the power during a certain operation from a dynamic model. And so this dynamic model, what's unique about our presentation is that this dynamic model is going to be evaluated for a skid steer mobile robot and it's going to consider slip in real time. So we're going to provide a model verification, which will be an experimental verification, and then we're going to consider power conservation and energy optimization over several manufacturing so here's a schematic of our skid steer robot, and this is shown in an instantaneous sense. There's three bodies. The chassis here has the desired uh, motion inputs of dx and omega, and then there's two uh, tracks that you see here. And actually these tracks are the portion of the uh, track that is in contact with the climbing surface at any instant in time. And so these tracks have slipping velocities. Uh, so VL is the longitudinal slip velocity to left track, uh, VY is the lateral slip velocity, and that is shared between all three bodies. The same goes for the right track. You also see two prismatic joints that connect the three bodies, and these are just a simple way of inputting the uh, track inputs. And then lastly, I'd like to point out that we're showing three instant centers, uh, and then the, I'd like you guys to notice that the instant centers of the left and right track are going to lie here. And then at the bottom, I have the generalized coordinates stated, uh, Vx and omega being the desired inputs of the chassis, and then Vy, Vl, and Vr, the slip velocities at the tracks. So here's our kinematic equations. Uh, this is just a constraint matrix, and our generalized coordinates represent uh, chassis input as Vx and omega, and of course you can represent that as the angular velocity. So this is our dynamic model. Case, the lambda is just a vector of Lagrange multipliers that is representing the constraint forces, and we're going to be using a Lagrange method to solve it. So this is our five equations of motion expanded, uh, five for each of the generalized coordinates. So tra traditionally, these five equations contain eight unknowns, uh, five from the generalized 